This prophetic word was spoken by Stanley Frodsham, who was a personal friend of Smith Wigglesworth. It was given in Chicago in 1965, five years before he died. With great judgment will I plead with the population of this country. Great darkness is coming upon the countries that have heard my gospel, but no longer walk in it. My wrath shall come upon them. The darkness shall be so great and the anguish so sore that men shall cry out for death and shall not find it. There shall be a lingering death, famine and great catastrophes. My wrath shall be manifested against all ungodliness. It shall come with great intensity. You have known my love, but have not experienced my wrath or severity. My judgments are literal and not a thing to be passed over lightly. Realize the severity of my judgments and my intense anger against the sin in my household. My judgments shall begin in my house. For I will cleanse my house, that it be not a partaker of my wrath against the iniquities of the cities. Before I visit the nations in judgments, I will begin at my house. When I do cause my wrath to come upon the cities of the world, my people shall be separate. I desire a people without spot or wrinkle, and such will be preserved by me in the time of my wrath which will be coming upon all iniquity and unrighteousness. I am going to prepare you for the coming days by a hard path that will cause many to cry out continually unto me. For when the going is easy, men do not seek me, but rejoice in temporary blessing. And when that blessing is removed, they so often turn this way and that way, but do not come to me. I am showing you these things in order that you may seek me continually and with great diligence. As you seek me, I will open up truths to you that you have never seen before. And these very truths will be such that will enable you to stand in these last days. As you are persecuted, reviled and rejected by your brethren, then you will turn to me with all that you are, with all of your heart, and you will seek me for the spiritual life that you need. For when the tribulation comes, you will have that which will enable you to stand. For many will be tossed to and fro. Men's hearts shall fail them because of trouble on every hand. These days shall be very terrible, the likes of which have never been seen before. When I visit my people in mighty revival power, it is to prepare them for the darkness ahead. With the glory shall come great darkness. For the glory is to prepare my people for the darkness. I will enable my people to go through the darkness because of the visitation of my spirit. Take heed to yourselves lest you be puffed up and think you have arrived. Many shall be puffed up as in the olden days. For then many received my message but did not continue in it. Did I anoint Yehu? Yet the things that I desired were not accomplished in his life. Listen to the messengers, but do not hold men's persons in admiration or adulation. For many whom I shall anoint mightily with signs and miracles shall become lifted up and shall fall by the wayside. I do not this willingly, for I have made provision that they might stand. I call many into this ministry and equip them, but remember that many shall fall. They shall be like bright lights and the people shall delight in them. But they shall be taken over by deceiving spirits, and shall lead many of my people astray. Hearken diligently concerning these days, for in the last days shall come seducing spirits. They shall turn many of my anointed ones away. Many shall fall through diverse lusts, and because of sin abounding. But if you will seek me diligently, I will put my spirit within you, so that when one shall turn to the right hand and turn to the left hand, you shall not turn with them. But instead you will keep your eyes fixed wholly on your Lord. The coming days are going to be most dangerous, difficult and dark. For there will be a mighty outpouring of my spirit of judgments upon many cities and many shall be destroyed. My people must be diligently warned concerning the days ahead. Many shall turn after seducing spirits and already many are seducing my people. 
It is those who do righteousness that are righteous. Many cover their sins with great theological words. But I warn you of seducing spirits who instruct my people in an evil way. Many of these I will anoint, that they in turn may purify and sift my people. For I will have a holy people. When I come, I shall not find faith upon the earth, but in a few. For when the time of testing comes, many will depart from the Lord. Many shall come with seducing spirits and hold out lustful enticements. You will find that after I have visited my people again, the way will become more and more narrow, and fewer shall walk therein. Be not deceived. The ways of righteousness are my ways. For though Satan came as an angel of light, hearken not to him. For those who perform miracles and speak not righteousness are not of me. I warn you with great intensity that I am going to judge my house and have a church without spot or wrinkle when I come. I desire to open your eyes and give you spiritual understanding, that you may not be deceived, but may walk with uprightness of heart before me, loving righteousness and hating every evil way. Look unto me and I will make you perceive with the eyes of the Spirit the things that lurk in the darkness, that are not visible to the human eye. Let me lead you in this way, that you may perceive the powers of darkness and battle against them. It is not a battle against flesh and blood, for if you battle in that way, you accomplish nothing. But if you let me take over the battle against the powers of darkness, then they are defeated, and then liberation is brought to my people. I warn you to search the scriptures diligently concerning these days, these last days. For the things that are written shall indeed be made manifest. There shall come deceivers among my people in increasing numbers, who shall speak forth the truth and shall gain the favor of the people. For the people shall examine the scriptures and say, what these men say is true. Then when they have gained the hearts of the people, then and only then shall they bring out their wrong doctrines. Therefore I say that you should not give your hearts to men, nor hold people's persons in admiration or adulation. For by these very persons Satan shall gain entry into my people. Watch for seducers. Do you think a seducer will brandish a heresy and flaunt it before the people? He will speak words of righteousness and truth and will appear as a minister of light, declaring the word. The people's hearts shall be won. Then when the hearts are won, they will bring out their doctrines and the people shall be deceived. The people shall say, did he not speak this and speak that? And did we not examine it from the word? Therefore he is a minister of righteousness. This that he has spoken, we do not see in the word, but it must be right. For the other things he spoke were true. Be not deceived. For the deceiver will work to gain the hearts of many, and then shall bring forth his insidious doctrines. You cannot discern those who are of me and not of me when they start to preach. But seek me constantly, and when these doctrines are brought out, you should have a witness in your heart that these things are not of me. Fear not, for I have warned you. It is possible that the very elect may be deceived, but it is not possible if you walk in holiness and uprightness before the Lord, for then your eyes shall be open and the Lord will protect you. If you will constantly look unto the Lord, you will know when the doctrines change and will not be brought into it. If your heart is right, I will keep you. If you will look constantly to me, I will uphold you. The minister of righteousness shall be on this wise. His life shall agree with the word, and his lips shall give forth that which is wholly true. There will be no mixture. When the mixture appears, then you will know he is not a minister of righteousness. The deceivers speak first the truth and then the error, to cover their own sins which they love. Therefore I exhort and command you to study the scriptures relative to seducing spirits, for this is one of the great dangers of these last days. I desire you to be firmly established in my word and not in the personalities of men, that you will not be moved as so many shall be moved. I would keep you in the paths of righteousness. Take heed to yourselves and follow not the seducing spirits that are already manifesting themselves. Diligently inquire of me when you hear something that you have not seen in the word. And do not hold people's persons in admiration, for it is by this very method that Satan will hold my people. 
I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. That you may triumph where I have triumphed. On the cross I triumphed over the power of Satan and I have called you to walk in the same path. It is when your life is on that cross that you shall know the victory that I have experienced. As you are on the cross seated in me, then you shall know the power of the resurrection. When I come in my glory, the principalities and power in heavenly places shall be utterly broken. Fear not, for I have given you the power whereby you may tread down the powers of darkness and come forth victorious through every trial. As you are on the cross, then you are victorious. It was on the cross that I triumphed over all the powers of the enemy. My life shall flow through as you enter into these precious truths. Look unto me and appropriate my life. As your eyes and desires are toward me and you know what it is to be crucified with me, then you shall live and your anointing shall increase. It was not my life as I walked upon the earth, but rather it was my life as I hung upon the cross that I openly spoiled the principalities and powers. I am showing you truth that shall cause you to overcome, to have power over the wicked one. This is the truth that will liberate you and those around you. You shall know also the fellowship of my sufferings. There is no way whereby you may partake of this heavenly glory and to reign with me. My word says that if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. I desire to make these truths real within you. As I keep them before you, you will in turn liberate many who are in bondage. You will have revelation of those who are in darkness, and I will give you the keys to liberate those captives. Many seek to liberate, but do not have the keys. Upon the cross continually will you know the power of my resurrection. If you will indeed judge yourself, you shall not be judged. As you seek my face and desire to be cleansed by me in all truth and sincerity of heart, I will judge you in a secret place. And the things that are in the secret place of your heart shall not be made manifest to others. I will do it in the secret place, and no man will know it. The shame that will be on many faces shall not be on yours. Therefore, in mercy and love, I am instructing you, in order that you may partake of my glory. As you are willing to walk with me and rejoice in your sufferings, you shall in turn partake of my glory. Look unto me, for you have need of my power to overcome the wicked one and the bondages in others' lives. I said that if a man shall judge himself, he shall not be judged. It is not my good pleasure that the shame of many shall be seen by all. But how can I judge the world if I do not judge my house first? Hearken unto these things that I am telling you. For if you will not hearken unto me, thy shame shall be evident to all. I would have you consider my life on earth. The anointing upon me was great, and yet the temptations were great on every side. They came in one form, and then in another, offering me first the glory of the kingdoms of the earth, and then in the form of reviling and persecution. There will be great glory given to my people, but also the temptations will be intensified on every side. Think not that with the glory there shall be no temptations or persecutions. The glory to my church shall be great, and so also the temptation from the enemy to turn my people from my paths. The temptations shall be great until very few that started the course shall finish it. First of all, they shall be offered great worldly possessions, and then will come great revilings and unbelief. Consider your Lord that as he walked, so it shall be for you. There shall be need of great intensity of purpose. At times it shall seem that everyone is rising up against you, trying to turn you from the course that I have set for you. It is written of me that I set my face as flint to go in the direction that my Father had prescribed for me. If you will finish the course the Lord has laid down for you, you too will have to set your face as a flint. With great determination you must walk in the course laid down for you. Many of your loved ones and those who follow you will seek to persuade you and to try and turn you from the course. With many words that seem right in the natural, they will speak to you. Did Christ not rebuke Peter who would turn him from the course God had prescribed? Understand these two things and meditate upon them solemnly. 
The persecution and the darkness shall be as great as the glory in order to try and turn the elect and anointed ones from the path that the Lord has laid down for them. Many shall start, but few shall be able to finish because of the greatness of grace that shall be needed to be able to endure to the end. The temptation and the persecution of your Lord was continuous. He was tempted by Satan in many forms throughout his entire life. And even to the cross where the ungodly cried out, If thou be the Christ, come down from the cross. Think not that there will be a time of no persecution, for it shall be from the time of your anointing until the very end. Difficulties and great persecutions will go on to the end. The Lord must prepare you to be an overcomer in all things, that you may be able to finish the course. The persecution shall increase as the anointing shall increase. In paths of judgment and righteousness shall the Lord God lead his people and bring them into that place which he has chosen for them. The Lord has chosen a place for his people, a place of righteousness and holiness where he shall encamp around them. All who will be led of the Lord will be brought into this holy place. For the Lord delights to dwell in his people and to manifest himself through his people. The holiness of the Lord will be manifested through his people. Let the Lord lead you, and he will lead you in the difficult places. He led his people of old through places where no man dwell, where no man passed through, in a place of great danger and in the shadow of death. The Lord will indeed lead his people again through such places, and at the same time will bring them out and into a place of great glory. Understand that the way toward the glory is fraught with danger and many shall fall to the right and many shall fall to the left. Many shall camp on lesser ground. But the Lord has a place of holiness and no unclean thing shall dwell among his people. Put your trust in him and he will bring you into a place of holiness. He desires to bring his people into a great glory, the likes of which have never been seen. For this is what the Lord will do for those who put their trust in Him. It is a place of darkness and great danger, and it will separate His people into the place where He would have them walk. He will protect them from the voices that will turn them from their path. He will bring them through the dark places and lead them into the light of His glory. He will rejoice greatly over His beloved and cause them to be filled with joy unspeakable. He seeks to lead his people into a new place of grace and glory, where he will indeed encamp among them. Put your trust in him, and he will surely bring you into this new place. Fear not the days to come, but fear this only, that you shall walk in a manner pleasing to the Lord. In this time I am ordering and setting up my church, and it shall indeed be pure, without spot or wrinkle. I will do a work in my beloved that has not been seen since the foundation of the world. I have shown you these things that you may seek the Lord diligently with all of your heart and that you may be a preserver of his people. Run not to this one or to that one, for the Lord has so ordained that salvation is in him and him alone. You shall not turn to this shepherd or to that one. For there shall be a great scattering upon the earth. Therefore look unto him, for he will make these things clear to you. You shall not look here or there, for his wells shall increase your strength and your faith as he prepares you for the times that are coming. The truths that I have revealed to you must become a part of you. Not just an experience, but a part of your very nature. Is it not written that I demand truth in the inward parts? It is the truth of the Lord expressed in your very being that shall hold you. Many shall experience the truth, but the truth must become a part of you, your very life. As men and women look upon you, they will not only hear the voice, but see the experience of the truth. Many shall be overcome because they are not consistent in my ways and because they have not permitted the truths to become a part of them. I am showing you these things that you may be prepared and having done all to stand.